And he said, you got this award. I went, oh my gosh. I'm Councilmember Will Jawando, Chair of the Education and Culture Committee. High school coaches are an important part of our students' education. They provide discipline and mentorship to so many of our high school students. I know I've benefited from my high school coach. One particular coach has been honored by the state of Maryland for his over 50 years of service. Every day I take attendance. Gary Frace is the cross-country coach at Springbrook High School. How's it going? Good. Work. How's your family? Good. They're doing great. And I got an email from Jeff Sullivan, the head of athletics in Montgomery County Public Schools, and he said, you got this award. I went, oh my gosh. Frace was recently voted cross-country coach of the year for the state of Maryland. Why me? I said, I've never won a state championship. I could go through Montgomery County coaches that have much better records than me. But Gary Frace is not just a coach. Just ask his runners. His ability to understand, like, especially with me, I, had, I used to have a lot of panic attacks during uh, practice, and he would be there to help me out and, like, calm down. During the race, yeah, but I talked to the... Um, Trainer? Yeah. Well, he would, like, explain to me, like, take me to, like, a place in my head. A lot of those things can happen, okay? The sounds, the uh, scenery, and just like help calm me down with taking deep breaths. Well, I've, I know that he's been coaching for a really long time, and he's well respected by a lot of the other coaches in our area. Uh, for me, it's just the way he's able to organize and lead our team. Just go. Not now racing. Nice and easy. He's always on top of everything with go. his emails and his newsletters. You know, if you ever have any questions, he'll be quick to respond, and he's really just easy to reach out to and let us know what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it, and yeah, he's just really great at just organizing our team and getting us together. Cross country is a sport for the long haul. The long haul fits the characteristic of Gary Frace. He has been at Springbrook for almost 50 years. I once said, give me a classroom of swimmers and distance runners, and I will have died and gone to heaven because they're just so focused. It's like our, we had a slogan on our t-shirt this year about cross country. No timeouts, no substitutes, no half times. So it really, there's no room to kind of say, I want to take it easy this part of the race. So it really demands a certain type of personality to persevere for three miles. When I substitute teach, I still occasionally substitute. One of the biggest challenges is kids looking at their phones during class. I think the one thing about coaching is for two hours, at least two hours, they're not on their phones. A lot of them, it, their favorite season is cross country because it is the change of scenery. Uh, you're running, in the woods, you're running on trails, you're running on asphalt. There you go, good job. You're running on all sorts, uphill, downhill. So I think there's, there's not a whole lot of room for monotony. Frace may think other coaches are more deserving. I could go through Montgomery County coaches that have much better records than me. But his understanding of young people with anxiety. And he would be there to help me out and like calm down. His ability to communicate. He's really just easy to reach out to and let us know what we're supposed to do. In his understanding of how to mentor other people's children. I would say the year in, year out privilege that get the coach and that parents entrust their child with me. I take that very seriously. Makes Gary Frace a worthy recipient for Coach of the Year. I like to think I run a positive program and build kids up, um, but it didn't used to be that way. And, you know, the coaches would yell at kids and scream at kids and cuss at kids. Think of my own kids. How would I want them or how did I want them to be coached? And I try to take that to my coaching. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. Everybody's smiling, man. It's happy runners. As part of the annual point in time count, council members joined volunteers to get a snapshot of individuals and families experiencing homelessness in Montgomery County. It's not too chilly. We joined Council President Evan Glass in downtown Silver Spring for this annual census. And I don't know if I asked you all before, have you done, done this before? No. No? What made you want to, to participate tonight? You know, help out where we can. That's right. You know, it, it is one of the most impactful things I do every year. Mm -hmm. And it's just walking around and you're, you're seeing who's out here, who needs our help. Being able to provide them with a bag with, with some utilities mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. and then just confirming so that after the Department of Health and Human Services can come back, we know where they are and then they can offer more, more holistic care right. for them. In 2022, 581 people were counted as homeless, 
which was down by 31 percent since 2018. Uh, the Housing Justice Act, which at its fundamental, we have to recognize that housing is a basic right. Council President Glass, a proponent of ending homelessness in Montgomery County, introduced a legislation that would help reduce and eventually eliminate homelessness. It was recognizing that people who experience homelessness sometimes are arrested or go through the criminal justice system for being homeless. And they get to a point in, in life where they're able to find uh, or apply for rental housing, but because they have an arrest record for that victimless, homeless associated crime, they're actually denied housing, yeah. which is one of the worst ironies, a uh, catch-22, uh, catch exactly. We later joined Council Vice President Andrew Friedson in downtown Bethesda. I need, I need three of you to come with me. I said, we'll search the garage and see for you. Then. All right, we, we can come where he and volunteers no were combing through the streets, parking lots, and stairwells. Check to see if there's anyone in the stairwells. The stairwell's empty, so we just checked from top to bottom and uh, nobody's here. In search of folks who might need assistance. Right now, a uh, gentleman was not interested in speaking with the team who went out to interview him, and so uh, he's still captured in tonight's point in time count, uh, but as an observation, not as an interview which is really a powerful opportunity for us to come together as a community to shine a light on homelessness in Montgomery County. Uh, we uh, have found five people, and including one who uh, I think for the first time we're able to engage, uh, he needed some medical care, uh, and so we're gonna send a team back uh, with a nurse. This one night in January provides council members the opportunity to get an understanding of what the county needs to do to provide support. We can't address the challenges that residents are facing if we don't know where they are and if we don't know what they need. The data collected from the surveys will help Montgomery County's effort to end homelessness, with each count getting us closer to that goal. Uh, and too many residents, unfortunately, who are experiencing extremely challenging circumstances and who are uh, experiencing homelessness. Today, we're here to celebrate and break ground on an innovative, affordable housing development. It is a big day for Montgomery County as ground is officially broken. Well, this is a groundbreaking, so I brought my work boots. Hey, Gabe, let me see your boots. And I am uh, ready to go here. For the county's largest ever affordable rental and home ownership community at the former Recreation Department building on Randolph Road, in Silver Spring. One, two, three. Beautiful. Leaders from AHC and Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland joined county elected officials to mark this innovative partnership, leveraging county land for deeply affordable housing in the county. The Council of Governments has stated that the DC region needs to build 320,000 housing units over the next decade. And so, the 195 units that are going to be built right here are going to help us get to where we need to go. Vice President of Real Estate at AHC, Alan Goldstein. Good morning. I don't think I've spoken in front of this many people since my bar mitzvah. Who is also a lifelong Montgomery County resident, said that what makes this initiative special is the fact that it goes beyond building homes to building an entire community. This development stands out by offering not just affordable, but deeply affordable and larger homes. More than half, 87 of the 168 apartments are affordable at 30, 40, and 50% AMI, making them affordable to families of four, earning approximately 43,000 to 71,000, and to individuals earning as little as $30,000. Amazing. <laughs> This groundbreaking is especially meaningful for Councilmember Gabe Albernaz as he has once worked in the Recreation Building when he was the director of the department. So while this used to be home to the Department of Recreation, Roundhouse Theater, and an elementary school a number of years ago, it will now be a true home for generations of families to come. I am so excited to be here. Not only it's also a special day for Councilmember Natalie Fani Gonzalez. I'm who has worked on the Veers Mill Corridor Master Plan during her time on the Montgomery County Planning Board. Buildings that are electric, that's another big plus because it speaks, 
speaks about our commitment to make sure that we're not just building buildings, but we're also doing it in a sustainable way, the way it should be. County Council Vice President Andrew Feetson highlighted the development's emphasis on community. We have an opportunity to build a community around it that doesn't just serve the community that surrounds it, that is a community within it to challenge the status quo. And because of that, we are going to have one of the most vibrant, inclusive, and incredible communities that we've ever built in Montgomery County, and that will be a model, I think, for the rest of the region. Well, the work for this community has just begun, with County Executive Mark Elrich taking the first stab. <laughs> the entire community is set to be open by spring of 2025. Right. So, so, yeah, we got a bunch more down the hall. My name is John Hoover, and we're on an art walk at the council building. As you can see, this is, this is a straight one-shot photograph. The colors and the textures of the space were just intoxicating to me. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little anal right now. Let me just get that straight. My name is Ronald Beverly. I'm one of the photographers that's displaying work at the county council building. These are representative of things I've done when I was studying for my master's. Uh, this is typical things that take you through texture and tone and shape and the one that's in color is a more traditional landscape. So that's a, that's a perfect segue into why, how I went from traditional landscape pictures to something like the leaf stuck on the ice, on the uh, slap of the ice there. It was a project initiated by the county council to have some artwork uh, decorate their walls. They would not pass this place numerous times. In one season, it snowed. And it wasn't a heavy snow. It wasn't a wet snow. It was just powdery snow. And this is what it did. And I stopped. This is actually a color photograph. Because um, if you look close, you can see some, some warmth of the uh, branches in there. So it's color. It's not, it's not a black and white. So, but when, and I could have switched it to black and white, but you know what? I can't get this kind of tonal range like that. And snow is black and white. Panoramic is the way I try to capture a lot of the scene. So this is the Cancer Research Building right up in Rockville. It's uh, on research. Uh, I had driven by this building a couple of times. After the sun had gone down and the lights were on, I was like, oh, I, I think I really need to stop and, and, and make this photograph. So, and so this art is placed here in partnership with Montgomery College and the council to highlight artists. And it's going to develop into also student work. So this is like the inaugural show of that. And as this you know, hangs for a while and we get in more uh, work from students, uh, we'll be you know, on uh, sort of a schedule of swapping stuff in and out. So it's a, it's a really good project for, the, for Montgomery College students. That's actually a salvage yard series down there. I went and called it a junkyard one day to the folks when I was asking permission. It's like, no, 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 no. We are referred to the salvage yard. Okay, let's like, figure out what that first one was. Both of those, both of those from the salvage like, yard. Like, what is that? What was, what it's was a close-up of a truck fender that rotted. Uh, and that first one? Was, yeah, because yeah. everybody thinks this is a globe yeah, or, or the universe. It's a fender of a front wheel. The wheel, the tire wheel will be under here. Like that's the fender okay. and that's the front, I figured out the that side of the car. The Herman College photo program is just, you know, an amazing program that students go through from the beginning to intermediate to advanced classes and they come out with either a degree or a certificate that enables them to go out and work you know professionally in the workplace so you you could go through the entire photo program at Montgomery College and not own your own camera each class individually has a maximum of 20 but the, our photo program has around 200 every semester the college has invested in, you know, the best equipment, uh, the the best teachers to give them the experience that they would have in the real world, uh, and so that's it's a it's a great reason to do it. And our students are, you know, well received and well placed in uh, positions when they do leave the college. What's coming in the future will probably mostly students work once we work out the logistics of having competitions. And we're looking forward to probably uh, setting up a theme as part of the assignments to uh, bring into the hallways images of Montgomery County.